So it might be two years? Oh no, Margaret Owen, what are you doing to us? Everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Leandra the TBR Zero and my goal is to slowly but surely lessen my physical TBR one book at a time. Today I'm actually going to be doing a bit of an author spotlight on Margaret Owen. She is the author of the Merciful Crow series but she also is the author of this ongoing Little Thieves series. So book one is Little Thieves of course and then book two just came out this May and that is Painted Devils. If we can just pause to appreciate these very gorgeous covers for a moment. I am so grateful. Uh, thank you so much, Margaret Owen. Thank you, Henry Holt, Fierce Reads, and Colored Pages Book Tours for just allowing me to be a part of this process, for gifting me these two gorgeous copies. I genuinely cherish them so much. They are great, and they were great books to read, and I can't wait to tell everyone else who's watching this what I thought about them. To begin with Little Thieves, this starts off as basically a retelling of the fairy tale The Goose Girl. We get it from the perspective of the Wicked Maid, and I'll read the back of the book just to give you a bit more context if you actually don't know what that fairy tale is. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful, kind princess and her wicked maid. One day, the wicked maid stole the princess's face, and with it her name, her betrothed, everything. The princess had to toil away as a servant, while the maid lived like a queen. When the maid was caught, she died for her crimes, and the princess lived happily ever after. Or, that is how the story has been told. Now it's time for the wicked maid to tell her side of the story. So great. Yeah, we have Vanya Schmidt. She is this wicked maid, and basically she finds a way to steal the princess Giselle's face, her identity, through these enchanted pearls that are around her neck. And that's why no one can really tell that Vanya is actually the maid. And Giselle has been thrown out of the kingdom and she's just living as a peasant. And now Vanya has this, this life of luxury. But this life of luxury, of course, comes with strings. She is engaged to this horrific, very brutal soldier, colonel, whatever he is. He runs his own army. There's a huge political system in this book that you'll have to get into that I really enjoyed. I didn't think I would like the political system aspect of it, but it, it, it added so much richness to the story and it was great. So she's dealing with Adelbrecht, who she's meant to marry, and apparently he is coming, he's returning from war in a matter of days, and she's like, oh, crap, I'm gonna have to marry this really horrific man and I need to find a way to skedaddle. And her timeline has been shortened. She already intended to flee the kingdom as soon as she could, but she needed to kind of collect enough cash to, to get out of Dodge. And so what she's been doing is she's been stealing from the rich. She's been stealing jewels and all of these very, you know, glamorous trinkets and things, and then just trading them in for gold. And she's so close to having enough money to then leave the kingdom and try to flee and start a new life away from her godmothers who are fortune and death who seem to be watching over her but they don't really see her as their goddaughter they more see her as this servant that they want to serve them and she doesn't want anything to do with them she just she wants to live her own life she wants to stop living in servitude no matter the different levels that it is whether it's for a princess for a god whatever the case is and that actually brings me to explaining like what's going on in the spiritual religion mythical sense uh this world has low gods and of course i just mentioned death and fortune are two low gods in this world but so is eiswald and eiswald is um the low god of this forest and unfortunately our heroine our gray character she crosses Eiswald when she shouldn't and she gets this curse, this curse that focuses on greed in which she will begin to turn into gems. Gems will erupt on her skin um, just continuously throughout the next coming weeks until it finally kills her. And that's, I think it's the next full moon that she ends up needing having this deadline to try to survive and it is just chaos it's it's so great because one as i said vanya is this great character and she's a great character in the best sense where her moral code doesn't match the moral code of society but it's also because society has shaped her that way she has experienced certain trauma certain 
dark events in her past that have led her to be distrustful of others, to feel that she needs to protect herself because no one else will, and so she's willing to really do anything for her own survival, and that's what kind of has led her into this mess where she feels like she's never been appreciated, no one ever wants her, so if no one's gonna look out for me, I need to look out for myself, and it's just, it's really fascinating, and I just, I love her as a character. She is so willing to do anything to get what she needs, and I just, I could totally kind of understand that, especially when her circumstances and she's also very funny her dialogue with various characters had me laughing aloud it's great her with her godmothers we have emmerich who's this junior prefect who's trying to solve the case of the the penny phantom who the penny phantom you know spoiler is vanya she's the one who's stealing all these gems and he's trying to figure out who it is meanwhile this is much larger overarching mystery this this very dark thing that's happening uh involving the kingdom and involving her betrothed and there's just so many twists and turns that i i, I loved it everyone in this book is lying they're performing as well they're taking on different uh, identities to get the information they need to save themselves to do these various things so really Vanya's not the only one who's doing this it's just that her purposes are deemed not worthy for why she's doing them when every other character is doing the exact same thing in a different way but just to diff with different you know ends to means and all of that but it's just it was lovely it was so on your seat it was really great I loved it so much I gave it five stars I, I cannot recommend it enough I, I am definitely not giving this book justice but those are my thoughts and my feelings moving on to Painted Devils Painted Devils is the sequel and I have to say I was actually a bit gutted to realize at the end of the book that there is an intended third book I thought that this would be kind of like the Merciful Crow series which is a duology uh, which I haven't read, but because she is an author who's written a duology before, I was hoping this was a duology so I could just be very satisfied at the ending, but there was a cliffhanger and now I'm like, I'm gonna have to wait for more. But with Painted Devils, we definitely have uh, high stakes in this one as well, specifically because Vanya, of course, finds herself getting into trouble again, but instead of thievery, she's getting into trouble because she started this small lie that has just built up to astronomical proportions and she just she can't untangle it anymore it's almost become too knotted to take out the first white lie that she did and now 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 we have a cult we literally have a cult it says let's get one thing straight vanya schmidt wasn't trying to start a cult after taking down a corrupt margrave breaking a deadly curse and finding romance because you know her and emmerich have something going on and i don't think any of those are really spoilers um where am I? I just got up, wrapped up in the romance again. So finding romance with the vexingly scrupulous junior prefect, Emmerich Conrad, Vanya had one great mystery left, her long lost birth family, and whether they would welcome a thief. But in her search for an honest trade, she hit trouble and invented a god, the Scarlet Maiden, to scam her way out. Now that lie is growing out of control, especially when Emmerich arrives to investigate in the Scarlet Maiden, manifests to claim him as a virgin sacrifice which is just amazing so funny but also so scary so basically the whole idea was we left off with kind of everyone going their separate ways in little thieves and so vanya went off trying to find basically find her own trade her own proof of why she's significant before she goes finds her family before she goes to emmerich she's she wants to prove herself to them to herself that she's actually more than just a thief more than just a liar that she can actually do something and help others and so she goes off and realizes it's a lot harder than she thought and so she finds herself in this town and she's down on her luck and this this one event happens that she's like okay i need to fix this so i'm just gonna lie and so she she creates this this god saying oh i'm the prophet i received this vision can you all help me and so everyone helps her and then she kind of begins to um basically lean on the idea that this god exists just because people keep keep coming to her saying oh can you tell us what is the god said what's going on and it just it goes out of proportion and uh then finally she's at this ceremony where they are uh basically like asking the god for blessings it's this very dramatic affair and who shows up but emmerich because he has been assigned the case of trying to figure out who is creating this cult and have they basically falsified the existence of a god because in this world that's illegal and they and then he discovers that Vanya's at the center of it who's surprised 
But when this event happens and he's basically scolding her, uh, the Scarlet Maiden actually arrives on the scene and she turns out to be this very horrific, very powerful being where she marks uh, Vanya's love interest, Emmerich, with this red hand, a red palm on his chest. And she says, you are going to be the sacrifice because if you don't do this, that the entire town is going to be devastated or we're going like just horrible things are going to happen it's going to be your fault the two have to go on this adventure trying to figure out how to break this this new curse i suppose you could call it um and and still appease the scarlet maiden is the scarlet maiden truly a god if she is a god where has she been all this time what's going on and it's just it's really fascinating and these two characters their relationship is particularly heartwarming and I'm really glad that Margaret Owen decided to focus on it because she does focus on the idea of physical intimacy of becoming close of two characters who uh, just don't have any experience in it but and they don't have experience in showing their feelings whether it's emotional or physical and them taking their time with each other them not forcing each other into anything that they're not ready for so yeah I really appreciate that especially because Vanya is coming from a place of trauma especially because she did experience um, attempted sexual assault in Little Thieves. So just check out the content warnings if you're not prepared for certain things like that. And so Emmerich just is so lovely because he does the right thing in making sure that he's waiting on her to say what she's ready for. And I just, I really appreciated that. I will say the one thing that kind of frustrated me in this book, mainly because I, I was already set on liking the two of them together, is this there's a tendency where after a couple gets together in a book, the next book, there's always these conflicts where suddenly they're breaking up and then they're coming back together or they can't be together and they're coming back together. And while I understand that a lot of it has to do with the fact that Vanya still doesn't fully understand or trust herself to trust others in, in these kind of ways, I was like, just let them be supportive of each other. They're doing such a good job. He's so supportive. There's no reason why she shouldn't like have him support her. So those are the only things that were kind of annoying for me. But yeah the the ending was great i found it so lovely found family is yet again a huge theme in this book and you just you want to root for vanya you want her to just become this great person that she's basically destined to be and i feel like there was this comment that was mentioned by someone else in book two that will totally give spoilers away so i'm not gonna say it but the question that was asked and she doesn't answer it she's like i don't know what you're talking about but i was like this is key. This is very important. This is going to happen. Something's going to happen in book three. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So now I'm really sad because this just came out. So obviously we're not going to get another book for probably another year or so. And I think that this book, the book one came out in 2021. So it might be two years. Oh no, Margaret Owen, what are you doing to us? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm fine. I'm willing and waiting to, to read that book. But to give a little bit more information about Margaret Owen herself, she actually grew up on the Oregon Trail and eventually moved to Seattle. So she's now based in Seattle. And I know that at the moment, because of this new book that's coming out, she is kind of touring the US. So definitely check her out on Instagram, on Twitter, on whatever social media she has on her website. If you do want to find her on social media, it's at what underscore owls underscore eat, which is just a great handle in itself. So definitely check her out there. She seems to be just this very fascinating person because she studied Japanese, but both of these books have Germanic influences in regards to language that's being used. And I really appreciated that because I'm like a linguistics nerd and I just, I really enjoyed that. She also apparently has done a lot of stuff before she was writing. She worked, you know, odd jobs like thrift store you know working in that type of thing but she also worked at like a presidential campaign so i feel like i i get confident in recommending that you check her out as a person as well she has these gorgeous illustrations especially featuring characters from these books that i just i love i want them hanging on my wall they seem so fun and they're great so i might have to check into that myself but yeah i would 100 percent check this out if if you're interested in fairy tale retellings in modern language, in regards to modern humor, when it comes to books that are definitely set in different worlds and fantastical worlds, sometimes I think authors take language a little bit too seriously and they're trying to make it sound like this far off place and no one speaks the way we speak now. It's like, can't we just accept that we're already in this fantastical world, there's this completely different system of religions and gods 
we already have a different political system. There's kingdoms, there's princesses, we've got peasants, we've got a different type of like monetary value system as well. So just, just can we accept that these characters are going to talk the way we talk? Like just give us a bone here and like that's the one bone I want. But anyway, I, I really loved it. I gave Little Thieves five stars. I gave Painted Devils four stars. And oh my gosh, I just, these are epics. They are genuinely beautiful books that I'm, I'm so happy that I have. If you've read Merciful Crows or if you've read this series, please let me know in the comments. Let me know if I should be reading Merciful Crows ASAP because at this point I don't think I can get enough of Owen. And yeah, thank you again to those I mentioned earlier who made it possible for me to have these two books. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, now I've got to figure out what I'm going to read next because I'm currently not reading anything. I would tell you guys what I'm reading next, but here we are. Like, subscribe, comment below, and I hope you guys have a great day. Okay, bye!